I brought some books today, so we got a lot of material to cover. Got a lot of different books we're going to run through. I'm just kidding, but I do have a, a, a message, but how's everybody doing? Y'all feeling good? Enjoying the heat? You know, cr- crazy news last night. I'm, in, I'm just buying something at the gas station, and somebody lets, lets me know that somebody just tried to kill Trump. I was like, oh, wow. Uh, kind of crazy, crazy times that, that uh, we're living in. Um, but uh, I love what Ferris said earlier is that it's a great opportunity for us to praise God. It's a great opportunity for us, not obviously that somebody tried to kill Trump, <laughs> that, but that, um, that we have an opportunity to be who God's called us to be in the midst of this. Uh, and it's, you know, I, th- I think it's so, as, as if I've, I've kind of thought through that some of, you know, the, the religious spirit and the political spirit, it's amazing how much division they create. And you really have to guard your heart that you don't get swallowed up into that. It's, it's easy, you know, sometimes we even can have the right view or the right stance or the right belief, but we can still have the wrong heart. You know, and it's, it's really managing ourselves internally that I've got the right, right heart. That I, um, yes, there, there are things that, that we stand for and believe in because we believe that it's, it's the best. Um, you know, I, I personally believe that if you, you took, you built a society around the teachings of Jesus and everybody obeyed those and walked with those. And then you built, and you, you put that against any other religion, teachings, philosophy, culture, I think we all know in this room what society we would want to live in. We know what, what um, teachings are going to produce fruit and create the best lives for ourselves. Um, but obviously that is, uh, that is a bummer, you know, that, that we're kind of at this place of, of that much uh, hostility. And, um, and we do. We need to pray. We need to pray for our country, pray for our leaders, pray for uh, revival. And I think it's a, it's a great opportunity for the church to be the church. It's a great opportunity for us to bring the kingdom of heaven, to demonstrate heaven, to be yielded to Jesus and, and manifest his presence to the world, that he lives in us and that we get to do that every single day. Um, so, Jesus, we love America. We thank you for this country. God, we thank you for what you've done in America, Lord. I always think about all the men, the women, the families, the children, all the people that have sacrificed so that we can live in freedom, that we can live in a culture that values that. And Father, I pray, Lord, we pray for our leaders. Lord, we pray that there would be Um, healing in our land, healing in people's hearts, Father. Lord, I pray that a great move of God would happen in America, Father. And Lord, I pray that God, let it start in the church, Lord. I pray that we would wake up, Father, that we would become the people that you have called us to be, Father. Lord, that we wouldn't hide in the dark, but Lord, we would step into the light, Lord, that we would manifest your goodness and your presence on the earth, Father. And Lord, I do pray for backbone. I pray for that for us, for the church, Lord, that we would declare the truth in love, Father, that we would stand for what is good and what is right, Lord, and I pray for that over us in Jesus' name. Lord, we do pray for these candidates. We pray for Trump. We pray for Biden. Father, I pray that you would protect them, Lord. I pray that they would be covered by protection, Lord. I pray for that over them, Lord, and that, Lord, we pray that that in this moment, that just even what happened last night, Lord, I pray that this wouldn't bring more division, but, God, it would bring more unity in our, in our, in our land, Father. Lord, we pray for healing in our land. Amen, amen, amen. I do want to mention one thing. We do have, um, I think our early bird for KMI, our Kingdom Ministry Intensive, it ends next week. Uh, So we do a nine-week course that starts in August. It's like August 12th, um, and we do a nine-week Monday, Tuesday night uh, class. Uh, It's really an intensive uh, where there's really three things. We go after more than this, but I feel like there's three things that we really um, go after, and that's the relationship with the Holy Spirit and really creating a space where we can learn how to have a powerful relationship with the Holy Spirit. Number two, we go after identity. We really 
hammer in, like, who am I in Christ? What has Christ done for us? And how does that impact the way I think, the way I live, my faith? And we really go after identity, and it's really powerful to see the, the transformation that happens in that. And then we go after activating the believer in the supernatural call of Jesus. And we really go after activating people in the supernatural. Would love to have anybody that's interested in that, anybody that uh, would like to come join us. We've already got people registering. It's always fun to see what God does specifically in each course, like each course, there's just something unique that happens. And uh, the, 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 the testimonies of this, I think we're getting close to about having about of 100 people that have gone through it. We might hit that mark this, this time, and it's been neat to see the testimonies of all those. So you can register online. Early Bird does end next week, which means I think it's about 50 bucks off. So I just want to give you that information. Um, if you've got your Bibles, you can go to John, Brother John, Apostle John, John 15, some, some rich scriptures here. Last week, I started talking about discipleship. Um, to be honest, if, if, we're, if you and me are not becoming disciples of Christ, then uh, really I'm, I'm not doing my job. <laughs> like I think the, the thing that Jesus told his disciples to do was to go make disciples of all nations. And he said, to teach them to obey what I have commanded you. He said, go teach them to obey what I've commanded you. And then he says, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I believe that for you and me, our greatest call, the greatest call before really anything else, and I think everything flows out of this. I think my marriage flows out of this. I think my career flows out of this. I think raising my children flows out of this. It all flows out of being a, a disciple, a follower of Jesus. And if I can, can get that right, I'm going to get the other things right. It's like, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. But the, the greatest call for us as believers is to be a disciple. See, I would say it this way. I saw this quote and I thought it was pretty well said, is that Every disciple is a believer, but not every believer is a disciple. And I think there is just something to that statement that um, sometimes, you know, the, the, the Bible actually does say, I think it's in James, that the demons believe, that even the demons believe. And, and I would imagine that they're not disciples of Christ. Amen. <laughs> but they're not. Uh, but they, they believe. Um, and, but the question is, is, am I a follower of him? Have, am I, and I think there's an intentionality to this. I think there is an, uh, a walk to this that God calls us to. And that's really what we're talking about. And what I'm, I'm going to be talking about over the next little bit is being a disciple of Jesus. And I want to specifically go after one aspect of that. This isn't the only aspect of that, but I want to go after our, what we call our secret place. What we call the secret place is the one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. It's the place where um, I, I go to solitude, and it's just me and him. And it's the place where I am, I am just with him. And so we're going we're gonna to go after that today. And uh, there's some beautiful verses in John that we're going to hit. But before I do that, I do want to read this verse. This has kind of been a, a verse for me that I think really sums up this series. It says, therefore, as you have received Christ, Jesus the Lord. So I, I love this part of it. How many of you know there's a lot of things we need to receive? There's a lot of stuff. Freely you've received, freely give. There, there's a lot that God has given us. Uh, how many of you know he's done the heavy lifting? Like we, we're not saved because of our own works, but we're saved because of grace through faith in Christ Jesus. It's that when I put my faith in him, he, he saves me. And that he turns me, he, he changes my, and I really believe this, you're a new creation. It's like something that's totally new. It's like a, it's a, it's a new, like I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. And we receive his grace. We receive his love. We receive his, his, his joy. These are all things that, that come, you know, with him. But ultimately, as we received Christ, Jesus the Lord, then he gives this command. So walk in him. Just as you received him, walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. I love that phrase, walk in him. So there is responsibility for us. 
Like Christ has done all of this for us. But then here Paul is saying, now walk in him. Walk in the ways of Christ. Walk in his paths. Follow him so that we can be rooted and built up in him. Who wants to be rooted in God? I mean, where I'm just so rooted in him that if I try to go the wrong way, it's like I, I can't get out because I'm, I'm just connected to God. Like I'm, I'm, it's like even if I feel tempted by something, it's almost like I'm, I'm, I'm stuck because it's like I'm rooted in God and that, that every aspect of my life is connected to his love, that I am connected to him. So that's really the heart of this is walking in him. I'm going to read John I'm going to read some verses here. So John 15, 1, it says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. He cuts off every branch that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Amen. You are already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. Got to love Jesus' promise here. Remain in me and I will. Like I just love his powerful language. Like this is the declaration. Like he's going to remain in us. The question is, is am I going to remain in him? He's given us this invitation. Remain in me and I'll remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must, it must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, we're going to hit this in a minute, but this is just a powerful statement. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you. This is my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Here's a connection here that abiding is discipleship. It's part of being a disciple. Again, he says, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I love you. Now remain in love. Amen. Who wants to remain in some love? I love that. Now remain in love. If, if you obey my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. I'm going to stop right there. Um, I want to read this definition of abiding. You kind of catch the heart here of Jesus. He's he's saying, look, if you remain in me and I in you, you're going to bear much fruit. You, you, You walk with me. You dwell with me. You live your life with me. Your life is going to be full of fruit. I, I like this definition of abiding. It's, it's the Greek, if you go look this up, but it says to remain or abide. And then it, it goes into three different things. One of them is in reference to place. So what does abiding mean in reference to place? It means to tarry, not to depart, to continue to be present. I love that phrase, to continue to be present. So what does abiding mean? It means that I'm, I'm learning to be present with the Lord, that everywhere I go, and I do think it's in the secret place, but it's also in our, our lives, in our daily lives, that I'm, I'm learning not to get ahead of God. I'm, not, I'm also learning not to get behind Him. I'm learning how to stay present with the Lord in my life. I am becoming aware of His presence in all aspects of my life. And this is, I'm remaining with Him. Another one is in reference to time. I love this, to continue to be, to last, to endure. I think this gets into, I'm not in a hurry. I think it gets into that, that, that idea that I'm not, again, trying to get ahead of God in time, but I'm, I'm present where I am because I'm present with the Lord. And I think that's one thing that God's presence does. Every time, if, if I'm, I mean, you, you think about it, if you're worried, anxious, afraid, you know, you, you yield yourself to God, and what does his presence do is all of a sudden I become present where I am. I become more, um, I'm more centered in myself in God. I'm more centered in Christ, which makes me more present with where I am. 
It's when I get off that, that all of a sudden I'm, I'm in worry or I'm thinking about something, I'm over-processing, but if I can be centered in God, I'm not in a hurry. Another one is in reference to state or condition, to remain as one, not to become another or different. I love that too, to remain as one, that our, we're called to remain as one with him. And I think it's interesting how it says, and to remain as one, not to become another or different. So this is the definition of abiding. Um, <clears throat> abiding is discipleship. Jesus, in Luke 5, 16, it says, but Jesus often withdrew to a lonely place and prayed. Luke 5, 16, it says, but Jesus often withdrew to a lonely place and prayed. Lonely is solitary. It's uninhabited. Um, <clears throat> my journey with the Lord in, in, in the secret place, um, and again, I'm, I'm talking about this time where we get alone with the Lord, and my heart for today, for you and me, is to encourage us in this, to encourage, to inspire us to spend time with God, to spend alone time with God, where I'm in an undistracted environment, where I turn this thing off, I turn my computer off, and I'm, I'm alone with Him. And I'm building history with him. I think about my, my own life. I, my parents, who might even be in here, uh, they modeled for me. I remember being a, a young boy, and my parents would spend time with God. I remember them just setting aside time. I'd see my dad writing in his journal, and he would always get up early and spend time with the Lord. And I remember my mom will always tell me that, tells, tells people this story, but when I was probably four, somewhere in that, I was spending the night at my grandparents' house, and my grandparents did this as well. They would wake up every morning, spend time with God. And I was a little four-year-old, my granddad sitting at his big table reading his Bible, and praying, and he's, he's got his hands like, you know, like he's praying, and I just come and, and just copy him. I just would come down, I'm a little four-year-old, sit in a little chair, I'm, I don't even know what I'm doing, I just fold my hands and just sit there with him, and just, you know, bow my head, and it was, was something that was just modeled to me, um, but I, I remember early on, and, and something that, that, that's neat, I, I want to read this, because I think it brings some light to this, is earlier in John 14, Jesus said this. He said, if, you lo if anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and he will come to him and make our home with him. So if anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and he will make his home with him. Who wants to make God to make his home with you? You think about that, just that picture of God making his home with you. In another verse, he said, whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. I love this, that it's, he's the one that, it didn't say he's the one that's afraid of me. He's the one that loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. So here, to me, I think these are, these are invitations for us. I mean, you think about, like, how much of God can you experience in your life? You know, like, think about, like, how much is available. The truth is, is that God is everywhere, and God is pouring out His Spirit on all flesh. But some people put a demand on that. Some people actually have faith and say, I'm going to lean into that, and I'm going to lean into verses like this that say, you know what, if I obey God because I love Him, because I want relationship with Him, it says that God will make His home with me that God will reveal himself to me, that he will reveal more of himself to me. And I believe that that is true. I think some people are, they, they lean past just being okay being saved. You know, and it's like, you know what, I, I want to experience all or as much of God that this Bible has for me. And I want to lean into this. And I want to go, like, what, what does it look like to have a powerful time with the Lord? Where I am going to go set aside part, I'm going to set aside time, just like Jesus did. And I'm going to go spend that with him so that he can make his home with me. So that I can build a, a history with God that is powerful. And so, I I remember this early on. I used to go when I was in college and I first got saved, I would go to my parents' house and because they were working. And I remember I would just pray. And we we I remember my early training in prayer was I would just pace around. I would probably and I would I was more warfare praying. Like I mean I'm shouting and screaming and, and it was just kind of what it wasn't the that wasn't the first way. It's really when I really started walking with God. I probably my initial prayer was more really quiet. Um but this, I started getting around a group of people that just prayed, you know, in some ways it was just these kind of like just powerful prayers. And I would just go and just pray and pray and pray. 
and pray big prayers. And I remember just praying for revival at the University of Alabama and that our nation's going to turn its heart to God. And I'm like, Osama bin Laden's going to get saved. And, you know, we're just prophesying and praying over people and just all this stuff. And, um, and I remember one time when I was there, and I've, sh- I've shared the story at different times, but one time I was praying to God and I'm in this just kind of fight prayer, going for it, binding demons and everybody, you know, just going for heaven. And, um, and I remember all of a sudden I heard God say, if you're faithful with the small things, I'll be faithful with the big things. I don't even know. I mean, I think, I think at that time I was praying about what's kind of my next step and God, where are you calling me to? And I remember it, it was almost as close to an audible voice that I'd ever heard from God. And, and to me, it's like, this is what God does is he reveals himself to us. It's like when I set myself apart, I'm, 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 I'm by faith, I'm going into this place with God and I'm going to meet with him. And it's in those places where God is manifesting himself to us. And I've, I've had, that's why I brought some of these books here today, is I've had many different types of prayer. I mean, I remember um, one season I went through centering prayer. Uh, it was kind of, it's kind of an old, old practice that, that I think people did a long time ago that's kind of carried through. And this, this type of prayer was the reason why I really entered into this type of prayer is because my mind was going, my mind, I was overthinking. It's called, it's called, it's called worry. Like, you know, it's like over, I was worried and, and my mind's just going wild and just, you know, you can tell you're just not centered. And, and I, I have um, ADHD and so I can chase squirrels in my mind and get up and go do something and just be kind of everywhere with my thoughts. And this prayer was where you would go and be silent with the Lord and I would just go sit with him. And they trained you to, um, whenever your mind wandered, you would, you would have a word that centered you back into God. And sometimes this word, it could be Holy Spirit, it could be Father, it could be Jesus, it could be grace. <laughs> you know, but, and I, I remember, so my mind would start to run and I would just practice like centering myself back onto the Holy Spirit and back onto his presence. And all of a sudden your mind starts to wander. And it helped me in a season just learn how to center myself in him and grow some strength into that where my mind's not wandering in so many different directions. Um, you know, I, I also, I love um, some, some good, I'll give you some, if you want some heart just to get inspired uh, for the secret place and the practice of Jesus. Uh, John Mark Homer has a great book that I'm reading through that's called Practicing the Way, Be With Jesus, Become Like Him, and Do As He Did. Um, and then Bill Johnson has a book called Strengthening Yourself in the Lord as well. These are, these are great resources. Um, I, uh, I brought one more that I've kind of been reading through again. It's called The Practice of the Presence of God by Brother Lawrence. Uh, this guy, what's, what's awesome about this book is it's much more your everyday life. It's much more about learning how to walk with God outside of even the secret place. And I think he even makes a statement, something close to that he started to experience more of God outside of his secret place than inside of his secret place, that he began to learn how to just walk. And this guy like washed dishes and he did it with God. And he just encountered God like working in this, I don't know what it was, might've been a monastery or something. And just, but there's a lot of great resources out there to learn how to be with the Lord. <clears throat> so abiding equals fruit. If, if um, <clears throat> I'll read this verse, read, <clears throat> let me read this. My verse nine, it says, as the father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in love. If you obey my commandments, you will remain in love, just as I have obeyed my father's commands and remain in his love. I've told you this so that your, my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. So the, the, the fruit of <clears throat> abiding is the fruit of God. The fruit of abiding is if, if I'm not experiencing more joy and more peace and more you know, the, all the fruits of the Spirit, perseverance, self-control, forbearance is in there, um, goodness is in there, patience is in there. If I'm not experiencing more of that in my life, then I, I might not be connected as well as I think I am. <laughs> 
Because the fruit of me spending time with God, the fruit of abiding, should be that I'm on a trajectory. Maybe I started over here with a little bit of joy, but I should be moving up where I'm starting to experience more and more joy in my life. That joy is is growing. That peace is growing in my life. That love, that I am... I love people better today than I loved them yesterday. That I am, I am growing in the fruit of the Spirit in my life. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, I recently, and I, I think a, a something I even noticed in my own life is I'd lost a little bit of my joy. And I think responsibility and, you know, you, you're, you're stressed out. you got a lot going on in life. And <clears throat> you, all of a sudden, I'm like, man, I've lost some of my joy. And it was, it was interesting. Kate and I went to this retreat and there's this woman there named Pam Haynes and she's just this powerhouse. You may know who she is, kind of got a real prophetic voice and um, you know, she's kind of one of those people, you just want her to pray for you. You know, she's one of those like kind of like Brother Max or somebody like that. Man, I want him to give me a word, It'd be awesome to get him to pray for me. And so Pam's this just powerhouse awesome lady. And um, and we sit down with them, and they, she gives me this word. And, you know, you're kind of maybe thinking, I, I don't know, I, I honestly probably wasn't really thinking this, but, you know, you're, you, you sit down, and you're, you're wanting the word of, like, man, I'm going to be a great leader, or God's going to use you in a powerful way or something. And she was like, she's like, you know, I just heard the Lord say that you're funny. <laughs> I was like, exactly what I wanted. But, but it, was, it was actually, like, so good for me. And it was such a, it would even have been things that we had been praying for about being light and funny and, and enjoying and being filled with the joy of the Lord. And when I, I see this in people that have walked with God for a long time and, and they end in joy, they actually end more joyful. That I think as believers, we should be the most joyful people. It doesn't mean that you don't walk through hard situations, but you walk through it in joy. And that's what pruning does. Pruning actually makes me more joyful. You know, it says this, that you, you're pruned, which you look at that word, it means to be cleaned. And what cleans us, it, it, this word right here, the word of God, it cleans us. It washes us. And as I'm getting clean, sometimes we do get some dust. Sometimes we have some filthiness in us. Sometimes we have some sneaking thinking. Sometimes we have just mentalities and stuff that we've gotten trapped in. And it's in the Word of God that I'm, I'm actually, those things are getting clean so that I can experience more joy in my life, so that I can experience more love and peace in my life. And if, if I'm not going in that tra- tra- uh, trajectory, then somewhere I've leveled off. Somewhere I've, I've, I've stopped allowing the Spirit of God to, to, to move in my heart, to move in my life so that I can be pruned, so that I can experience more joy. <clears throat> Abiding also, it renews our mind and it transforms our life. I, I really think that, it, you know, you, you can go read a bunch of articles about this research, about this, that a, a big impact on the way that we think are the people that we're hanging out with. A big impact on the way that we think, we believe, and you know, you even can go look at some science on that. It even talks about how like your brains even start thinking the same way and all that. Um, so you can think, you, you imagine that, like if, if I want to think like Jesus, then I need to be around Jesus. If I want to believe like Jesus and think and have his perception, his judgment on things, then the best thing that I can do is spend time with this Jesus that so loves me. And actually knows what's best for my life. There's, there's nothing better for any of us than to be with King Jesus. To be with him and to let him shape the way that I think. I can't tell you how many times, whether you, you're hurt by a situation or challenged or looking at a challenge or facing a tough situation, where one, just, just his voice can shift that. Just a moment in his presence, his joy can take me from being confused, hurt, anxious, all of that in a moment. And all of a sudden now I have clarity because I'm just simply in his presence, because I'm just simply with him. And he is just rubbing off on me. And I, we're, we're, I don't think we're going to become like, look, we can, we can stand up and scream all that Jesus has done for us, which is so, so significant. But I don't want that just to be good theology. I don't want to just know about that. I want to experience the goodness of God in my life that I am starting to embody love. Because he, he ends there with 
the commandment is, is that you love one another. He doesn't actually end there, but it's towards the end. But it's, he says that you would love one another. The fruit that we all have is that when I spend time with him, that I actually should love my wife better, that I actually should love you better, that I should, if, and if that's not ha- happening, then maybe I'm not really hanging out with him. Maybe he's not really rubbing off on me. Maybe it's not a two-way street. Maybe I'm just talking and not listening. <laughs> you know, whatever it is. But I, I want that in my life. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to land here. Abiding empowers faith that nothing is impossible. I, I love this just because I love faith and I love, um, you know, I just I believe God has more for us. There's a verse in here, and the Bible is laced with this stuff. It says, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it'll be given to you. (laughs) Did you hear that? You remain in me and my words remain in you. Ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you. You know, I I think oftentimes and understandably, (laughs) maybe understandably so, maybe not, um, we, we dumb this down. We, we bring this down to our, our understanding where it's like, well, clearly he's not saying ask whatever you wish. Um, but what if he is? Like, what, what, if, what if he actually is inviting us into a place of thinking the way he thinks? I, I will say this, that I do believe that if you're actually remaining in him and his words are abiding in you, then I think you'd be asking the right things. Like I think you would, I think he trusts so much his presence, his word, his transformation that's happening inside of you that he he knows that that's going to give you the right heart. That I can, and I think he's also it's an invitation of like, man, I I can ask like God wants to do something so significant inside of me that in a sense nothing is impossible. That I can I can pray big prayers, you know, prayers that scare me. Prayers that I can believe for things that are big, and God is like giving us this invitation into this. So my heart would be, what if we didn't dumb it down? Because I think a lot of times what we're doing is we're, we're probably, I think if you've been a Christian for a while, you've walked with God for a little bit, you've probably prayed, believe God for something, and it didn't happen. You've probably done, you know, seen just the hard situations that people have walked through. And I think a lot of times, you know, these verses, we kind of try to bring them down to our own experience. But what if instead of doing that, we tried to go up to where he is? And we tried to think the way that he thinks. And instead of me bringing myself down to him, him, him bringing him down to me, I'm trying to be seated in heavenly places with him and actually have his faith and his perspective. Because, I mean, when you look at the life of Jesus, it was like, hey, you're out of food? Here's some food. You're done with the wine? We got some more wine for you. You don't have any money to pay your taxes? Go check out that fish's mouth. Here's your taxes. You need to be raised from the dead. Here you go. You need, you're sick. You got a withered hand. What, whatever it is. It was like Jesus, he just had endless resources in the kingdom of God. And he demonstrated that. And he is the perfect image of the Father. He's the perfect image of God. And I think he's trying to raise us up to where he is. And, and so I, I, I think you can approach this verse with childlike faith and the right heart. I think you can come to this verse and and it's like, wow, what is possible with God? What what is possible with him? And I think you would start, I think when you're with him and his words abiding in you, I do, I believe you'll start asking the right questions. Um, I, uh, nothing's impossible with him. I I think just for us today, you know, like what if we started to believe just in our own lives you know, what, what if we started believing that our, our kids, those kids back there, they're, they're going to they're gonna teach the world about identity. They're going to they're gonna be, be world changers back there. There's going to be apostles and prophets and revivalists and great men and women of God that demonstrate heaven on earth. And there's going to be doctors and lawyers and, and people that have, how about this, like high character and walk in the power of God. And like, what if we just started to believe prayers? Like, God, you, you can ask whatever I wish. Like, I, and I think this happens. I think when you get around Jesus, you don't start praying little prayers. Like, you get around him, and he is Mr. Faith. And, and you get around him, and it's like, man, nothing is impossible with God. You can only imagine if you walked with him, you know, those 12 disciples that saw everything that he did. I mean, you can only imagine how, how your faith would grow through that process. Um, <clears throat> and so I, I think... 
believing God. It's a fruit of abiding with him. And I also just see God's partnership in this. I think it's really, it's kind of cool that we know that God's in charge and that, you know, he's the, he, he's God and, and, and we're not, and he is, and we, we get that. But the, the thing that's cool here is how he brings us into this partnership is that you see that in this, he's inviting us that you matter. Like actually what I've put inside of your heart, what is in there, I want to pull that out of you. I want to pull out, like when you, when you get with me, I'm going to pull out the greatness that's in there. I'm going to pull out the gold that, that God has put inside of you. And I think this is a direct fruit of spending time with him. So my, my heart for us today is to go be with God. It's just to go spend time with him. Just as, just as Jesus did, um, <clears throat> that he would often go and he would often go to a lonely place, to a place that's uninhabited. That's a place where it's just him and God. There's this um, <clears throat> moment where I think the disciples got a sneak peek into Jesus's quiet time. It's called the Mount of Transfiguration. Like I, I personally, you know, this this isn't in the Bible. This is just Jonathan's Jonathan's opinion, but I think that this this would probably often happen when Jesus would go up the mountain, and in this Mount of Transfiguration, in that moment, uh, uh, Peter, James, and John are there, and. <clears throat> All of a sudden, uh, Elijah shows up and Moses shows up, which would have been pretty cool. You know, you got some some guys that had obviously had died. They're they're hanging out there with you, and they begin to talk about you know Jesus's departure, and um, and it's this powerful moment where Jesus in, encounters, and it says that his clothes became like a dazzling white. It says I think even his face was like altered, and there's this transfiguration that just happened, and I think this. This is what happens is we, you know, when I go be alone with God, I encounter Jesus. I encounter his presence. I encounter him and transformation happens in our lives. Um, If you can, can you stand with me? I just want to pray over us, just a a fresh passion to be in the presence, to be with Jesus. I just want to stir that up in us. I just feel like I see a, a, a garden growing in people's hearts. I just feel like I see the, that beautiful fruit growing from being with Jesus in our lives. You see this awesome fruit just coming out of us because we're we're taking time to be with him. We're setting apart time. And so, Lord, I pray for for a, a fresh hunger for your presence, a fresh hunger, God, inside of us for the secret place, for us to have a one-on-one relationship with you, God, where we take time to be with you. And Father, I pray that you would stir that up in us. And Lord, the beautiful thing is, is that we get to be with you and walk with you. And God, we experience more of your fruit, more of your life. Lord, we get to learn how to think the way that you think, to see the way that you see, that we get to have great faith the way you have great faith. And Lord, I pray for a hunger for that inside of us.